What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good weekend. So I've been making a lot of ROG Ally videos mainly because I've just been distracted by all the positive feedback and genuinely how awesome that handheld PC is. But here we are back again with a highly requested Steam Deck video. Now, the Steam Deck is one of the most talked about handheld PCs in history, and it's made its mark and splash on the industry. The Steam Deck fans and users have held through even after the ROG Ally came out. That kind of devotion can only be met with respect and the Steam Deck community are definitely one of the most loyal communities out there. That shows that when a company as big as Valve gives their time, devotion, and money to something that represents something as big as the Steam Deck and the Linux community, that community will give back. And even though I've had my Steam Deck for a year and have all these guides out in YouTube on how to save as much battery as possible, I admittedly spend a lot of time with the console docked. Not because the battery is lacking, mostly just because I can. And because this is a genuine love and hobby of mine, I've managed to find some of the best ways to get the most out of my docked experience with the Steam Deck. And without further ado, and not to confuse it with anything else, this is my Steam Deck Ultimate Docking Guide, Volume 1. And just to get ready for your ultimate docking experience, if you need a proper dock for your Steam Deck, I highly recommend any JSOX dock, specifically for the Steam Deck. It fits the Steam Deck perfectly with any case. I used everything from a cooling fan, a flip case, and the official JSOX mod case. And speaking of the cooling fan, while docking the system, the Steam Deck will get extremely hot, so I do recommend purchasing the cooling fan from JSOX or any other company that's credible. And I'll link all that in the description. There is a 4K USB splitter cable that I purchased from Best Buy for about $30. If you are using a splitter to dock your Steam Deck, I advise buying a 90 degree USB-C extender so you won't flick the cable by mistake and potentially break the USB-C port. And those are usually about $8. And just make sure it has a high transfer rate and make sure the dock can be provided with enough potential power up to 100 watts just in case you want to connect some other stuff like external cables or a portable monitor. You need enough wattage to power those and the Steam Deck. But the 4K splitter that I used is called J5 Create USB-C to 4K HDMI 100 watt pass through. I know, rolls off the tongue, but it's been working great for me for the past year. And it's so simple to just connect one wire to the TV, splitting to the power adapter and the Steam Deck, and officially getting started with the Steam Deck software and focusing on how you can make it better and the most optimized for your docking experience. The first thing you need to get started with and install are Steam Deck plugins. But before getting the plugins, you should prepare yourself with the Steam Deck's notepad and not the new updated notepad in gaming mode. Pretty much to get this notepad, just first go into to desktop mode and open the KWrite app. It's your basic notepad with listing options, sections, and a fantastic memory. I've been using it almost the entire time I had my Steam Deck. But for this instance, you need it specifically to type in a code so you have it at all times. And the code is R-O-G-A-L-L-Y. I'm just kidding. Type in the code displayed on the screen. I'm not gonna say it because it's huge and save it in KWrite because you'll need it anytime the SteamOS updates. It has the tendency of uninstalling the plugin tab after updating. But don't worry, your plugins will recover automatically, but most likely you'll have to update some plugins after every single SteamOS update. So that's a bit of a pain in the butt, and there's nothing we could really do about it right now. I've been dealing with this for about a year, but I solved it by saving the code in KWrite and just copy and pasting. So after you've made sure you saved it, copy the entire line of code, and you're gonna wanna go into the console terminal. All you have to do is simply search for console on the Steam Deck start tab and click on it. After that, simply paste the code I gave you to the console and press enter. After a few moments, the console should notify you that it's finished the install. Go back into gaming mode. Now press the right menu button with the three dots. You should now see a plug symbol. Select the plugin tab and you'll see a classic setting symbol and what looks like a small market next to it. Select the market symbol on the left side of the settings tab. Now you're in the world of plug plugins and where there's pretty much no limits to how many plugins and what kind of plugins you can add to your Steam Deck. In order to see what plugins you get, of course, you're going to need the internet. So make sure you have a connection. When everything's loaded up, you'll see a search bar, search power tools and install that specific plugin. And by all means, if you see anything else you like, download what you want. When you're all done installing everything you need to, go back into your home screen 
press the menu button or the three dots button. Or if you're already docked, hold the Xbox or PlayStation button and press A or X, depending what controller you're using. Go to your plugin tab again and select power tools. Now this is where you can manage how many cores you can use along with what kind of power you can provide to them. On the very top, you should see advanced and SMT. There will be a switch next to SMT. Click on the switch and enable it. Don't worry, we're almost done. When you select SMT, you will see a threads tab pop up. Make sure to increase the amount of threads from four to eight. After doing that, find the governor tab, select it, and another tab will pop up. Select performance on that tab. Depending what kind of game you're running, there is also power save and other options that will match your needs. And the last thing to get ready would be going into the performance menu on your Steam Deck and allow tearing. Even while docked, the Steam Deck doesn't display any tearing. So for all the games on the list, the vertical sync will be turned off. I'll repeat it sometimes just in case you forget. Now we're all done getting your Steam Deck ready for docked mode. If you already have a dock ready, make sure it's connected to at least a 45 watt charger, like the one the Steam Deck came with. Also, there are still currently audio mix-ups with the Steam Deck and dock mode. If you're having trouble hearing audio or if your TV or speakers aren't outputting any audio, simply go to desktop mode. Click the audio icon on the bottom right and select Rembrandt Radeon High Definition Audio Controller Pro 8. I repeat, Rembrandt Radeon High Definition Audio Control Pro 8. For some reason, every plugged in external audio device is set to eight. Not sure why Valve hasn't fixed this yet, but probably for the same reason Windows hasn't fixed a lot of features people complain about too. There are just so many speakers out in the wild. If your plugins are all ready to go, go into the properties of the game you wanna play docked, highlight the general tab, and you should see enable Steam Overlay and a few selections under it. You'll see game resolution. Set the resolution to 1080p or 4K if you're going to run a less demanding title. And of course, you have to own a 4K TV like most people. After selecting the proper resolution, quickly go to another tab and back into general. Right under game resolution, a new selection called set resolution for internal and external display will appear. Enable that option. Now that resolution has been set and just start up the game. If the game has been running well in handheld mode, chances are you'll have a smooth docking experience. It should dock in gaming mode just fine. Now, after the game has started, usually selecting a resolution of 1080p will heat up the Steam Deck and may cause some overheating for certain demanding titles like Street Fighter 6. In general, 1080p is a great resolution for older titles like Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, Doom 3, and Street Fighter 4. If you have your game set to 1080p and the temperature of the Steam Deck is too high, or if the performance isn't as high as you'd like, I find the Steam Deck has a secret weapon and a performance sweet spot. And that is the resolution of 900p. Setting almost any game to 1600 by 900p will greatly improve performance and keep your games looking crisp and vivid. It's the best of both worlds. Now I'm going to cover five games that I find work incredibly well in dock mode. The first game on the list is Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. That's a bit of a newer title, but it is based on a PSP game. So setting it to 1080p, 60 hertz, and high settings is a pretty good way to play it. If your monitor or TV supports it, switching to 40 hertz will help it slightly more in demanding areas. Crisis Core for the most part stays at a constant 45 to 55 FPS, but setting the resolution to 900p will improve performance greatly. It's most definitely a secret weapon for the Steam Deck. But Crisis Core Reunion is an action RPG, so timing isn't exactly the most crucial part of it. So if you want to put the resolution up to 1080p, I won't fight you on that. I already finished Crisis Core Reunion on the Steam Deck and played it about 70% and mode. This game actually deserves its verified mark. And if I were to come up with a personal rating system to gauge how well this game can be docked, I'll call it dockability. I would give Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion a B plus. Its FPS in 1080p does fluctuate quite a bit sometimes, but in 900p it's pretty much a flawless experience. And next up is my personal favorite. It's a game I mention almost in every video and you're probably sick of hearing about it. Resident Evil 2 Remake. This game will require some tweaking to get it to run near perfect in dock mode. Before you even download the game, go into the properties and into the betas tab. Select beta participation and you'll see dx11 underscore non dash rt space dash dx11 underscore non dash rt. Select that and this will essentially disable the ray tracing update that plagued the Resident Evil remakes, giving you the original and more stable version of the game. And it's a good thing we have that plugin. It will come in handy with a demanding title like this for sure. After setting the internal resolution to 1080p, for the most part, Resident Evil 2 works fine, but I just love playing this game with a constant 60 FPS and without a 
cooling fan, the Steam Deck tends to overheat, sometimes dropping frames drastically or just constantly stuttering. I also fine-tuned the resolution in the game down to 1600 by 900 p There's a small difference in detail, but in order to get the most out of the game, that's the resolution I recommend. As far as graphic settings, changing the rendering mode to interlaced will pretty much make everybody's hair look slightly more jagged, but will give you a near 50% performance boost. Back when I had a 1060 laptop, this option came in handy plenty of times. After that, you can set the settings to whatever you want, excluding the resolution and rendering method, of course. After you've found your personal personal, aesthetically pleasing settings, the game should run very well in dock mode with a constant 60 FPS in most areas of the game in 900p. Outside of the RPD station's main hall, the game runs almost flawlessly, to the point it will make the Nintendo Switch turn in its dock. And this game's dockability rating is a B-. There are some stutters here and there, even if you set it to 900p, and the frame rate could be better in 1080p but still a solid experience that enabled me to finish Resident Evil 2 Remake on the Steam Deck in docked mode about three times. And next up is a game that works almost flawlessly on the Steam Deck from day one, even in docked mode, and that is Spider-Man Miles Morales. This was the first game on the Steam Deck that docked with zero issues, which is why I'm including it in my first volume. With your plugin settings enabled as well as the resolution set to 1080p in the game's properties, keeping the game at default settings with FSR 2.1 enabled and locked at 30 FPS dynamic resolution should do the trick and should be all you need to have a seamless docking experience. The only thing I touch in the game's graphic settings is the resolution. Setting the resolution to 900p yet again will help you achieve constant performance and visuals. The image degradation from the dynamic resolution will be slightly noticeable, but this game still looks damn good. Changing the dynamic resolution FPS doesn't work. The game simply can't run above 30 FPS with higher resolution than 720p. This game's dockability is a solid B. The FPS could be slightly better, but the picture is glorious. And next up is one of my all-time favorite fighting games, Dragon Ball Fighters. Unfortunately, it won't be as easy as popping in a cartridge to play it. You will need to download Proton GE 7-41. All you have to do is go into desktop mode, the Discover app, and type in Proton Up-QT. Download that and select Proton GE. Then you will see the version Proton GE 7-41. And just go ahead and download and install that. After it's all set and done, just go back to gaming mode, go into Dragon Ball Fighters properties, and select the compatibility. Proton GE 7-41. After that, just make sure the game resolution is set to 1080p in the game's properties and start Dragon Ball Fighters. At this point, you can set the game's resolution to whatever you want. This game plays perfect, and I have zero complaints about it. Its dockability rating is a solid A+. And the last game I'm covering in this ultimate docking guide will be Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain. This game is no good running at 1080p. The FPS drops to about 35 in some instances, and with The Phantom Pain, precision is everything. So I highly advise bringing the resolution down to 900p to smooth out the FPS to an almost buttery smooth 60. You could probably reach better FPS with 1080p by driving the graphic settings down to medium, but at 900p with everything except motion blur, textures, and texture filters set to high, it's going to be a smooth and great looking experience, even at 900p. Also make sure to turn off volumetric clouds. That option never helped FPS in the history of PC gaming. And just to remind you, make sure vertical sync is off in game. In case you forgot, with the Steam Deck's performance settings, we are allowing tearing. It just doesn't show. But yeah, Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain is a killer docked experience on the Steam Deck. With those specific settings, you shouldn't be running into many frame dips. Besides the complimentary stutter, with Metal Gear Solid, the Phantom Pain, the Steam Deck doesn't get too hot, but you can't be too sure. When playing all of these games, I do recommend displaying the full metrics to see exactly how many cores you're using and what kind of temperature every part of your Steam Deck is experiencing. Just so you know if you need a cooling fan for that game or not. But I do highly recommend getting a cooling fan, especially if you want to dock your Steam Deck properly. But that's just a little advice to keep your Steam Deck nice and healthy for more docking guides in the future. And for now, I'm all out of advice, but this has been the first Steam Deck docking guide. I hope I answered any questions you might have had when docking the Steam Deck for the first time. But if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments. You know where it is. And thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good one. Later.